Hello and welcome back to a game between Mick Joe and a gender terrorist. A gender terrorist is on a desert deck without cuts, it, an 80 card desert deck, because apparently uh, they, they couldn't figure out what cards to cut, so you know, they're just running an unoptimized 80 card deck. So that's gonna be fun. I still don't really know what their deck is trying to do. They, I guess they have creatures and land destruction and desert synergy and yeah, I guess it's a, it's a Buzzard Baron's deck, maybe. Uh, meanwhile, McJoll is running Blue White Rini, which is uh, very different from what it was last GP because Rini got slapped with a huge nerf. Now it costs 6 and 3 white to cast, so it comes down later and it's more expensive, and you can only reduce it to 3 mana. And also, its token making ability only triggers once per turn. So as opposed to the temple deck that Blue White Rini was before, it's now more of a control deck. In fact, McDowell's running qu quite a few Wraths in the deck. They're running 4 Setting Suns and then 4 End of Days in the sideboard. And a bunch of counter spells still. But no longer runs Patient Optimizer, so it's no longer a temple deck. You can still sort of do the same thing as before where you just counter everything until you can drop a cheap Rini and then win from there, but it's a lot slower and less reliable. So both players start off with lands. I guess McJaws is just going to end of turn opt. Uh, Gender Terrorist has two deserts and plays High World Survivalist. Not a card that, that I was expecting to see in a GP deck. But I guess it does sort of add mana. You'll feel like that, that, that card's a bit weak for what you want to do. I guess if, you have, if you're running 80 cards because you were because you didn't have time to figure out what to cut, then you might as well play whatever looks good. So McJoel draws Cursory Glance. I'm assuming they're just going to play another land and then hold up one of the counter spells. In fact, they have a handful of counter spells right now. And they have Staying Sun in case a gender terrorist tries to swarm the board. Not that they really can. So McJoel is just fetching for dual land. I'm assuming, I'm assuming they, they just pass. The gender terrorist, uh, let's see. I guess they, so they get to 4 mana this turn, so they can play a 4 drop. But they can also play a 3 drop if they're willing to play a tap land this turn. They don't actually have any 4 drops. Okay, so they're probably going to, huh, is, are they using human shifting sand for anything? I guess they just want to drop us, play a 3 drop pre combat. Or, no, they're just going to attack with High Wild Survival List. Are they expecting High Wild Survival List to die or something? Uh, they don't, no, they're not attacking. Oh, okay, okay I guess they're expecting McDraw to use a remo removal spell on High Wild Survival List. But looking at McDraw's deck, yeah, they don't actually... Or actually, no, Sweep the Leg. Yeah, Sweep the Leg is the only thing that removes High Wild Survival List here, and not even permanently, so... McDraw is very unlikely to cast that. So, Junior Terrorist swings with High Wild, gets the mana, and then plays the Hari. And McJoel is probably just going to counter that. And I'm assuming they're probably going to uh, Cursey Glance that, because we do can hit stuff that's more expensive later. So yeah, perhaps Junior Terrorist should have just played the top land this turn, so that they get 5 mana next turn. Although they still get 5 mana next turn, because High Wild will get Wanderlust. Actually no, because... Flourishing Lowlands is a duplicate, so yeah, Gender ter Terrorist not playing the tap land this turn a is probably a huge mistake. Because now they can't drop 5 drops next turn. So at the same time, uh, Earthbreaker Behemoth doesn't really have anything to hit. But it is a 5-5, five five, so that can start swinging and pressuring McJoel. So Gender Terrorist draws Homeboy's Companion. I guess it's a Desert Synergy card. And I guess that's well, they can run it out and then play a desert, so that gets a counter. I think Gunner Terrorist just wants to attack first and see what McGill is holding, or if McGill is holding any removal. Yeah. So surprisingly enough, uh, yeah, McGill doesn't have any way to kill High Wild Survival List if Gunner Terrorist just doesn't do anything. But if Gunner Terrorist does play another creature, then McGill can setting sun. Okay, uh... Inner Terrorist is going to tend to the Grove. Let's see what they hit. And they hit Void Flare. Uh, no Wanderlust from them, so... They McJoe and face for two. Uh, not the worst outcome for McJoe. 
Although McJaw was probably hoping that uh, Gender Terrace would cascade into a non impactful creature so that they can get wiped by setting sun. Okay, and McJaw is going to redo the Tented Grove. Huh. I guess McJaw really doesn't want Gender Terrace to ramp. Still, I. Well, actually, no, never mind. Right, because Tented Grove would have enabled Wanderlust. So. Since McJaw saw that Gender Terrace won with their Wanderlust creature before playing a land, they're assuming that Gender Terrace doesn't have Wanderlust available from hand. And that's actually just correct. So I'm assuming, uh, no, Gender Terrace is just going to forget about the extra mana from High Wild Survivalist. Okay, that, that's not good for Gender Terrorist. Because with the extra mana, they could have played Convoy Convoy's Companion and then the Desert and played Counter on it. But somehow that actually manages to be let me correct because they managed to play around setting sun with that. The event horizon can't kill high wild survivalist. And McJaw is just going to pass. And they're still holding up. They're still going to hold on to hold on to the wrath in hopes of hitting more stuff with it. So Gender Terrorist draws a glory bound chorister. It seems like all of Gender Terrorist's creatures don't have do anything immediately. Right, Lumbering Ox, yeah, all of these guys don't do anything on ETB, and Earthbreaker doesn't have any creatures to punch. But McJaw's actually just going to take more damage. They're still holding up Invent Horizon for something. Okay, and then McJaw gets rewarded for waiting, because now they can Invent Horizon the High Wild Survivalist. And if Ginger Terrorist drops another creature, then McJaw gets to wrath away three creatures, which is really good for them. Uh, Ginger Terrorists thinking so they're so they they know the deck list so they probably think about whether to play into wrath or not so they decide to play one more creature mcjaw just gonna let it resolve so that they because it gets swept up by the wrath uh, mcjaw is still thinking about something i guess they're wondering whether to event horizon or oh right they're deciding whether to children's or not because now that a gender terrorist has two non-white creatures mcjaw can play children's and they're going to children the clouds for three. I'm assuming they're wrathing next turn though, so all of the birds will get killed by the wraths. Unless unless McJaw's thinking about not wrathing this turn and just holding up counters and then using the birds to chump block, which actually isn't that bad of an idea because that kind of encourages gender terrorists to play down more creatures that get caught in the wrath. It seems like McJaw isn't gonna do that. They're just gonna swing with the birds first and then Wrath afterwards. So they're playing so they played Children of the Clouds purely for life gain there then. And that might have actually been a mistake. Now they don't have any mana to counter stuff and after Gender Terrorist drops a single creature, Invent Horizon won't be able to kill it. And McJaw doesn't have any other ways to deal with creatures in their hand right now. So Gender Terrorist plays their three mana four four with some text. The text doesn't really matter because McJaw's going to be McJaw's dying if they don't answer this thing soon. Any either ways. And McJaw draws sweep the leg, which is exactly what they need. Because it will delay this creature. Or even better, it it forces the opponent to recast this creature and then McJaw has counter spells mana up now, so they can answer it on the way down. So Gender Terrorist attacks with their uh, three mana four four. And I'm assuming McJaw is just going to sweep the leg that thing. So that bounce so that's right, and uh Junior Terrorist doesn't actually have to have enough mana to recast this thing. They're probably just going to drop Lumbering Ox this turn, which McJaw can answer with the cursory glance. So Junior Terrorist tries to play Lumbering Ox. I'm ass I'm assuming McJaw is just going to cursory glance that thing. Yep. So McJaw draws yet another counter spell. So not a bad situation for McJaw right now. Because Gender Terrorist has a handful of big bomby creatures which m don't match up well against counter spells. So, yet another creature. And Gender Terrorist still doesn't draw land. Although, I guess they don't really mind not drawing lands right now because they just want to keep playing creatures that run McDraw out of counters eventually, or answers. And the Event Horizon is still sitting in McDraw's hand. Gender Terrorist plays their 3 drop. I'm assuming McJaw just re uh, counters it. And I'm assuming the same exchange is going to happen next turn too. Assuming Gender Terrorist draws a land. Or I guess if they don't draw a land, then that means they drew a spell that they can probably cast. And 
McGill just counters it again. And McGill is is slowly running out of answers though. They draw a land. So not what they want right now. They have more mana than they need. And McGill is going to keep the land in hand. Huh. I wonder why though. I, I guess oh yeah, I guess they're probably trying to preserve life because a nebula will ping them. Renaturus finally draws their fifth land. So I guess they're probably playing Gl Glorybound Cl Chorister right now. Yeah, and then McGill is going to redo it. So now McGill is finally out of counter spells. Unless they match the top deck another one. That's sweet flag, yeah that counts. Although that only delays the problem. So gender terrorists can either play one Earthbreaker Behemoth or Sandstorm Sentinel plus Solar Flare. I think they're probably going for a Sand Sandstorm Sentinel plus Solar Flare here. And Sweep the Leg isn't actually a very good answer to that thing because it's just going to come down next turn. Well either way, McDraw is forced to Sweep Leg this thing because otherwise they're just going to die. Or I guess yeah, you can let it resolve and then Sweep the Leg it as a creature. And McDraw is just going to Sweep Leg that thing. So once again, McGill needs to top deck something. A land is not what they need. And McGill's still not playing out their lands. Are they trying to bluff that hard? Because, I mean, even if the deck doesn't need that much mana, it, you still do want to play out your lands because Rini costs, Rini costs 3 mana and there's still things you want to spend your ma mana on, especially if you want to double spell or even triple spell after Rini. Gender Terrorist, end of turn solar flaring, McGill. Not, not much McGill can do about that. Gender Terrorist draws another land. I'm assuming uh, Gender Terrorist is just going to recast this thing. And McGill has no way to answer it. But at least it's still not lethal yet. And wait, Gender Terrorist, Terrorist is just going to pass. And now McGill does draw a counter spell, finally. Or, okay, so seems like Gender Terrorist decided to pass because they can just use Dust Ribbon Sepulchre to start making creature tokens. I guess that's probably a way to kill McGill that goes under counters. The Dust Room Sepulchre lets you exile a card from a graveyard, and if you manage to exile a creature or Planeswalker card, you can make a token that can pay two more to make flying 1-1 one, one spirits. So finally enough, uh, the Event Horizon that's been stuck in McGill's hand for an entire game can uh, finally has a target. I'm not sure if McGill wants to use it on this, but... Okay, so they... I guess they're just... Yeah. They probably want to hit something better with it. And actually, uh, Gender Terrorist making the creature tokens off the Dust Ribbon Sepulchre will actually uh, enable Event Horizon to hit more stuff. So, Gender Terrorist still refuses to cast Sense from Sen Sentinel. Are they really that afraid of counter spells? Like, not, not casting Sentinel just gives McJaw more time to draw into counter spells. So, McJaw cycles reconsider. Uh, they don't draw into what they need. Gender Terrorist is going to start making more tokens. So now Event Horizon hits 3 drops, which means that McGill doesn't actually have to counter Sandstorm set to no. Although at this point, uh, McGill has to worry about just dying to tokens. Maybe Gender Terrorist's plan of using the Serpent Sepulchre to beat McGill's death of tokens to go under counter spells wasn't that bad of a plan. So what could McGill draw drawn there that would have punished that plan? Rini probably, right? Yeah, if McGill drew Rini there, then they play Rini, and then they event horizon the token, make it Angel, and then uh, McGill's suddenly back in the game again. Although, uh, right, uh, McGill wouldn't have enough mana to play Rini, and then event horizon and the counter spell, so Earthbreaker just kills Rini, and then McGill loses. So either ways, uh, I think Gender Terminus was pretty safe to win the game there. And even if McGill drew a Rast there, then... Their terrorists can just keep making tokens off Dust Ribbon Sepulchre, and then Sandstorm Sentinel comes out eventually and kills McJall. And speaking of, uh, Gender Terror is still refusing to cast anything. Are they, are they just hard trying to play around a Wrath and Counter Spells? Like, there were several times this game where Gender Terrorists could have just gone for blood, but decided to hold back anyways and give McJall more time to draw into something. And now McJall tops like an opt and can start. And gets more opportunities to dig for something. So they find a Rini, and they're going to play Rini. So now the question becomes, uh, are they willing to play Nebula and ping themselves in order to have both Event Horizon and Redo up? I guess if they do that, then uh, they will have enough blockers for all of the flying uh, tokens, but not the Sandstorm Sentinel. Uh, though Gender Terrorist can't play Sandstorm Sentinel and Earthbreaker in the same turn. 
right play for Mercurial to go for here is to just play Nebula, ping themselves, and then event horizon on their turn, and then redo it, and then redo on your opponent's turn. Or actually, no, that doesn't that no that doesn't work because uh, end of turn Death Servant Sepulcher makes three creatures. If you Nebula and then Event Horizon, you only have you only have two blockers. Then your opponent swings in with three creatures and you die. But then you're so I guess I think he, either way, make is just dead here. Yeah, they're gonna go for a Nebula play. Not that it really helps. So yeah, McDraws is going for the play that I mentioned, but they're still going to die from Dust Ribbon self to tokens. And notably, they decide to exile, right, because Rini doesn't have flying, but the tokens do, so you have to exile the flyer. Ender Terror swings in with three creatures, and McGill dies. So for sideboarding, so seeing it as a creature-based deck, McGill fly once, end of days. Also admonish, because uh, Gender Terrace does run a decent number of enchantments in their deck. Other than that though, uh, Fighting Light? No, not really. So Soulgate, I don't think Turner Terrace Turris is graveyardy enough for that. And so Pandemon doesn't hit enough, so probably just end of days and admonish. And meanwhile for Gender Terrorists, it matters a lot less because they're running 80 cards, so like the sideboard. Uh, but they probably want, well Imperial Siege uh, wrecks their mana base. Tenacious Guide gets through counters and Maybe also L Weaver because it's Planeswalkers against Control, that sort of thing. So back for game two, McDraw gets a hand that seems quite good, so they're probably keeping that. It has cantrips, a counter spell, a wrath, and a Rini. That's everything that McDraw wants. Uh, meanwhile, Gender Terrorist has a hand with two lands, and wait, they're, right, they're running main deck Alvarads for some reason. They don't even have the right map for turn 2 Imperial Seeds, so I think they're probably mulliganing that, yeah, and now they have, well, they have hand with Buzzard Barons, but not the right map to cast it. I think they might still be forced to keep this, though, and they're just really hoping to draw a red source, because if they, do, if they don't, then they're kind of screwed. They tend to grow needs a red source, and they really want to be playing that on turn 3 to ramp. Anyways, McGill leads off with Monkey Shines, bottoming both Opt and Rini. So that's a pretty good monkey shines if it gets one value into the yard. So uh, gender terrorist still doesn't draw a red source. They're just I guess they're just gonna go ahead and start playing stuff, playing down their lands. I guess Elmazar is technically a red source, or no, it's no, never mind. Elmazar just makes colorless mana. And McGill plays Island and ho passes the turn holding up redo. Oh hey, uh, gender terrorist does draw the red source, but. Uh, they didn't play the forest on turn 1, so they can't tur play turn 2 Buzzard Barons. Which actually ends up being a good thing for them somehow, because now McGill passes his turn without a redo target. So McGill has a pretty awkward hand right now, because he got 2 Wrath and a Rini, and then some lands, and a redo. So McGill probably playing Motor Monastery Tapped, and then just pass turn holding up redo. Alright, I guess Interest can start activating Duster and Sepulchre. Just to start accruing value from that. Alright, but that's where himself occurred doesn't target, so but it does eat up McJaw's graveyard, which is good for Janitorius because McJaw wants lots of spells in their graveyard for Beanie. And they decide to exile Monkey Shines for some reason, but well, okay, yeah, I get. Right, because they don't want Dustray and Sepulchre to make a token. But exiling spells from the yard means that they're now they're farther further away from a Beanie. Janitorius draws another land and now they get to do the turn three tends to grove. Is McJaw going to... well, th I guess they're going to see what uh, gets cascaded into first. And okay, Tentagrove hits Solar Flare. Uh, not a huge problem for McJaw, they're just going to... they're probably just going to take it. So are they going to redo the Tentagrove? Uh, how much do they care about ramp? A lot, apparently. Not sure how I feel about that. Well, no, actually, right, because if uh, Gender Terrace ramps up, then redo doesn't actually counter stuff anymore. So yeah, probably a good idea to... Uh, redo the, the ramp spell. So McJoel draws another soft counter. So they're probably just going to play a land and pass. Uh, what utility lands does McJoel run? Let me check. Oh wait, McJoel doesn't actually run any utility lands, huh? They So they actually cut Airy Pillar from the previous Rini deck. Not sure how I feel about that. I feel like they should at least run one copy of Airy's Pillar just in case. And now uh, Jenner Terrace draws Tenacious Guide, and McGill's counter spells are now not very good. Then the question is, is 
So Junior Chairs can play on Tenacious Guide or Buzzard Variants. They're just going to tend to Grove and see what they cascade into again, I guess. And this time they cascade into a creature, which I think McGill is fine with playing Resolve because it just gets swept up by the Wrath. Uh, but McGill is still going to counter the ramp. I guess hitting a ramp isn't that bad of an idea. Or no, they're going to cycle re reconsider. I guess they're fine with playing. So they're fine with playing uh, Inner Terrace ramp this time. Actually, how close are they to Rini mana? Uh, three spells in yard, so that's uh, six mana Rini. So McGill is sort of close to just dropping Rini. But the problem is that all their spells are uh, board wipes. I guess McGill could do something like uh, setting sun on one turn and then next turn they drop Rini or something. So they draw, draw another land, which isn't what they want. Uh, are they just going to... So there is an argument for them to just uh, setting sun the single one drop so that it can Rini next turn on an empty board, hopefully. They can also just uh, save the Wrath. But they're just going to... They're just going to hold off on the Wrath. I guess they're probably hoping for uh, Inner Terrace to drop a bunch of creatures this turn so that it can Wrath next turn and get some good value off it. Uh, on Junior Terrace side though, they probably want to play Buzzard Barons now. So Buzzard Barons and then probably play a 3-drop of their choice. Or they might actually, they might drop their whole hand this turn because, or no, Buzzard Barons needs 3 hit things to hit, so. So Junior Terrace plays a Desert Land, uh, which puts a counter on Cowboy's Companion. Junior Terrace finally attacking. They'll so attack for 2 and then, let's well, how many creatures they drop this turn. And not playing anything. It seems like Junior Terrace is really playing around Wraths right now. It seems like they're getting rewarded for it because McGill still draws nothing. So they can play the 6 mana Rini now, but they don't have any follow up. And yeah, they're going to drop the 6 mana Rini. So I think that probably gives Junior Terrace the cue to start dumping their hand because now that Rini's on board, McGill doesn't really want to Wraths. So actually, looking at Junior uh, Terrace deck, do they, actually, do they have any way to deal with Rini? I don't think they do, right? They don't have any ways to kill Rini. I don't think so. Or no, wait. Uh, Earthbreaker Behemoth is their only way to deal with Rini. Junior Terrace plays a land, uh, gets counter on the convoy, and are they finally playing Buzzard Barons? Okay, so I guess they were holding Buzzard Barons until McJaw is tapped out because they really don't want it to get countered. Although if they if they were that paranoid, they could just use Tenacious Guy to get it out. But I guess at the same time, they don't want Tenacious Guy to get killed by a Wrath. Not that, so now that Buzzard Barons is out and Rini is out, is Junior Terrace going to start playing down creatures? Because forcing your opponent to Wrath away their own Rini is still a pretty good outcome for you. And it seems like, yeah, they're playing creatures now. It seems like Junior Terrace is still holding back though. They're, I don't think they're playing it down Tenacious Guy just yet. They still want to play around the Wrath. McGill getting slapped for 4 and just taking it. Okay, so McGill is going to play down their Tenacious guy, I think. Or no, they're not. Okay, so they are still playing around Wrath. Uh, McGill finally draws an opt. I guess they're probably playing it to just get to get a Rini Angel. I'm assuming they don't really want the Setting Sun here. So I guess they're probably hoping to opt into another instant spell so that they can make another Rini token on their opponent's turn. And now Rini Angels actually block uh, gender terrorist creatures quite well. Oh, they even get, they managed to find Event Horizon, so they're probably going to Event Horizon the Buzzard Barons on their opponent's upkeep. Which should probably be up, uh, upkeeping Event Horizon now. Well, I mean, that's, okay, so it's, I guess McShaw is just trying to ambush something with the Rini Angel then. Gender terrorist playing down Tenacious Guide. So, let's see what McShaw decides to Event Horizon here. Because they can Event Horizon either Buzzard Barons or the Tenacious Guide. Buzzard Barons well, slow down token production. Tenacious Guide means that McJo can start countering stuff again. At this point, I don't think Re Redo actually does much. Uh, so Redo currently stops anything that costs 4 or more. If Generator draws another land, then uh, Redo stops working on 4 drops too. Although I guess mana colors also matters, but Generator is moving, moving to attacks. I guess they don't really have any good attacks here because Rini Angel... Trade with the Sandstorm Sentinel. I guess General Terrace is just planning to trade Sandstorm Sentinel for the Rini Angel. I think McJoll is probably more than happy to take that trade. That's pretty good for McJoll, I think. And now does uh, General Terrace drop another creature? They probably want to play a Nochi then. 
So now she can start following up plans on either side. Do some job finally plays Event Horizon, and they're gonna Event Horizon Buzzard Barons instead of the Tenacious Guide, probably to prevent more tokens from coming in. And it seems like uh, Jenner Terrace is just going to hold up Dust Rune and Sepulchre. Although, yeah, they can Dust Rune and Sepulchre their own Sand from Sentinel at end, end of turn. McDraw draws Cursey Glance, which doesn't do anything because Tenacious Guide is out. Well, at least, uh, oh, right. Uh, Dust Rune and Sepulchre makes vessels that make flying tokens, so the Dust Rune and Sepulchre tokens can be used to chump block Rini Angels. I think that's what Jenner Terrace is going to do here. Although I feel like a chump blocking while they're at 23 life is a bit premature because Dust Ribbon Sepulchre tokens are a limited resource. Oh, uh, Generatorist draws Nariba, which is a really good draw for them because now they can start drawing cards from their lands. And it's not like uh, Generatorist was doing anything else with their lands anyways because last few turns they've just been keeping cards in hand. So Convoy Companion goes up to a 4 4, which trades with the Rini Angel. Joe's probably happy enough to trade Rini Angels for a Convoy's Companion here. Now they're going to activate Elmazar to make a bunch of mana. Okay, they're using all that mana to draw off Nariba. Now it seems like Mikjo is in trouble again because even if uh, Genitaris can't deal with Rini, they still, they're still pulling ahead with, in card advantage and they've got plenty of life to spare. So I guess Genitaris is deciding whether to Raid Convoy's Companion for the Rini token or not, uh, they decide to do that. So again, McJo is sort of on the clock right now because uh, the birds are just whacking them down. Oh, they're, they're attacking with Tenacious Guide too. I mean, that's an easy Rini chump, right? Or Rini block, right? Well, actually, it's not that simple because, yeah, and McJo decides to let just keep Rini alive. If Rini block Tenacious Guide there, then Gender Terrace can just solar flare Rini. Or, or before damage is dealt, Jinder Terra Solar Flares Arini and still has Tenacious Guide up in order to give it an counterable. And then after that, those two trade. And Jinder Terra passes the turn without casting any spells, which doesn't give McJill any opportunity to activate Rini. Jinder Terra is probably just going to attack again uh, this turn, which would put McJill down to 2 if they don't block with Rini. So if they do block with Rini, then Jinder Terra Solar Flares Arini and then. McJaw cursory glances for no uh, for no reason and then gets a Rini token. Okay, so I guess the game isn't all of that or isn't completely over yet because Enterturus still has to navigate this end game. Okay, playing here at Woken World first. So is McJaw going to cursory glance out of desperation just to get Rini Angel? Uh, they kind of have to do that right now. And yeah, that's what they're going to do. The Tenacious Guide gives Gyre uncounterable. The Cursey Glance does nothing other than make a Rini Angel, which is still, which is, which it's an ideal, but kind of, but McJaw kind of has to do it. Dentress probably should have attacked and then cast their spells, because now that the Rini token's out, it's a lot harder to attack through. And like attacking before casting spells sort of like forces McJaw to either decide to trade Rini for a Solar Flare or just straight up die. Yeah, because if, so Dentress attacks uh, the two birds and a tenacious guide, and then if McJell doesn't block, then Solar Flare is lethal, and tenacious guide makes it uncounterable. If McJell blocks tenacious guide with, or uh, never, oh, right, Gear has haste. So is that guaranteed lethal? Uh, so Rini block, Angel block. No, it's not guaranteed lethal just yet. Jerry terrorists can Solar Flare to Rini, or they can Solar Flare face. But either ways, they made the game a lot more complicated for themselves. And even if Gear had haste, they still probably have attacked and then cast spells. Okay, so they're going to kill the Rini now. Game's still in Gender Terra's favor, but it has gotten a bit more complicated. It seems like uh, Gender Terra didn't really plan out their mana that well this turn because now they can't Almazar and then Nariba. So it seems like Mikhail still wants to attack and then pass. Uh, they do have redo. Oh right, they uh Generatoris has this Rim Sepulchre, so they can start making uh flying tokens. And the only thing that's really keeping them back is a angel. For uh, Generatoris, their best bet is probably just to keep activating Desperate and Sepulchre to make a bunch of vessel tokens. And then crack all of them at the end of McJaw's turn and swing in with a bunch of one-one creatures for lethal. 
while well, McGill can't cast things at source or at instant speed. The uh, generator is deciding to lay down their tapped desert instead of cycling it. Well, I guess there really isn't much to cycle for here. Like, what deserts do they have, anyways? Okay, so Genitaris is going to use Elmazar's mana to activate Nariba to draw two cards. So drawing Solar Flare here would probably be lethal. Yeah, Solar Flare is lethal. Uh, Tented Grove isn't. Well, actually, Tented Grove. You can play Tented Grove and hope to cascade into Lightning Heal it, or Solar Flare, which would give them lethal. Then again, they don't know what's in McJaw's hand. For all they know, McJaw can be just holding a handful of counter spells. So, Genitaris is just going to attack with the two birds, which knocks McJaw down to three. And Genitaris decides to pass. I guess they're doing end of turn crack vessel. McJaw draws Guiding Light. So, that actually is pretty huge for them because now that means Lightning Helix won't kill them. Genitaris isn't. is still. Pretty far ahead, as far as cards are concerned. It does mean that McJill has a chance to claw back into the game now. Okay, McJill's swinging with the Angel. Genitaris probably wants to crack the Vessel for the token. Yeah, Earthbreaker breaking myth. So that probably ends the game. And it seems like Genitaris has enough mana to play Earthbreaker through a redo. Although I guess they can activate Almazar first, just to make sure that they really do have enough mana. So they're going to activate Almazar. Uh, they do realize that everything that McJaw has. To, oh, they're not going to Earthbreaker right now and get Lethal. Hmm. Well, they tend to grow up into a Tenacious Guide. Oh, okay. That, but I guess Tenacious Guide also makes Earthbreaker go through re Redo. So is Baron Charis is finally going to uh, actually get Lethal after holding back for this long? Uh, Surely, uh, Gernotaris has enough mana to play Earthbreaker plus use Tenacious Guide's ability, right? Yeah, they do. Okay. Not actually, is it lethal? Uh, surprisingly, it's not actually lethal because, yeah, Guiding Light prevents one damage, so that means Earthbreaker Behemoth will have to do all five damage to the Angel, which means that no excess damage is overflowing to McJoel. But, okay, so yeah, fine, they're gonna play Earthbreaker Behemoth and punch the Angel. And now Janitaris gets a swing in for two. Oh, they're going to use the shifting sands on Gyre. Oh, yeah, that, that's actually a pretty cool combo. Right, because Gyre is a land, well, it's in the graveyard. So with Team of Shifting Sand, you can just play one mana to turn into a copy of Gyre. And yeah, now it, so it's actually lethal. Now uh, Janitaris swings in for five and seems like the game's over. Uh, McJell dies with two Wraths in hand. Seems like uh, Gernotaris did a really good job of playing around Wrath this game by just not dropping their creatures and just holding back and mostly focusing on activating Desert and Sephokir to make tokens.